Hey fam, welcome back. I'm your favorite shift relationship strategist, Marshawn Alanio, and I want to talk about the 10 lessons that I personally learned by not loving myself. So let's jump into them. Number one, the first lesson that I learned by not loving myself was how can I expect anyone else to truly love me when I didn't love myself? You see, when you don't love yourself, we, you me have a tendency to attract people that don't love themselves right and so if i don't love myself and i'm putting myself in these situations that are not conducive to a future that i want to be proud of to tell my child my children my grandchildren right and i'm attracting the same type of energy the same type of man my way and even relationships just people in general coming my way who also don't love themselves it's a whole bunch of tumult that's happening there. It's like a literally a, um, a hurricane or a volcano coming together. And it really, 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 really sucks. And that moment you don't look at it like that because you're thinking, um, yeah, I have on the nicest clothes. I drive the nicest car. And maybe you don't even drive the nicest car or have on the nicest clothes, but you're decent, right? You keep yourself together, keep, you, keep yourself on lock as well that you know how. And it's all a facade for many people out there. So until I had to learn that, hey, Marshawn, you have to love yourself before you can even think about somebody else coming in and loving you, then that is when the, the my life started to turn around for the better for me, where I'm able to now impart this love to my, my partner, my spouse. I'm able to impart this love to my daughter. I'm able to impart this love to my true friends and friendships, and even being able to recognize the things that once was okay with me that shouldn't have been are not okay now and i'm okay with cutting the cord i'm okay with stopping that friendship i'm okay with um walking away from that relationship because it just is not conducive to where i want to be and how i know i am worthy how i know that i am enough how i know that i do love myself and because i love myself i'm not allowing you to treat me any kind of way Right. So that's the first lesson. I cannot expect anybody outside of me to love me more than I love me. Number two, I learned that I wanted a man so badly that I accepted a piece of a man who was paying me some type of attention versus waiting and understanding that you're whole you are deserving of a man to love you fully. You are deserving of a man to give himself to you fully. You are deserving of a man to um, cater to you like you're going to cater to him. You are deserving of a man to take you out into the world and show you off on dates and um, vacations and meeting his family and he's meeting my friend family and we're, I'm meeting his friends and he's meeting my friends. You are worthy of all of that to really build a sustainable relationship instead of feeling like I have to give away my body in order for this man to like me. I have to give away my body in order for this man to stay around. I have to give away my body in order for fill in the blank, right? So instead of me continuing to go down that road, I had to learn that, no, I don't want a piece of a man. I want to want a, I want a man who wants me just as much as I want him who wants to be in the relationship just as much as I want to be in relationship, who is as giving to me as I am to him, who wants to build a, an empire together, who wants to actually build a family relationship together. See, I am deserving of that. I need that. I want that. And if you're not the man that's going to give that to me, then I'm okay with allowing you to spread your ring, wings and move on with your life as I am going to move on with my life. I am not willing to accept any piece of a man in order to say that I have a man. Because do I really have a man? If it's only a piece of him, if he's only showing up partially, if he's only giving so much and not willing to give it all. He's not willing to open up and be vulnerable. He's not willing to be um, there for me in ways that I am willing to be there for him. Is that really the type of relationship? Is that really the type of marriage that I wanted to be a part of? And the answer is an emphatic no, it's not. So I had to learn 
that I don't, I'm, I'm not willing to accept just any peace because he's paying me attention. Maybe months have went by, maybe years have gone by and nobody had paid me any attention in a romantic state. And so instead of me accepting where I'm at and me needing to get me together because for whatever reason, I wasn't attracting the, the man that was for me because I wasn't whole. Instead of me realizing that, I was just like, oh, okay, he paying me some attention. I, I mean, you know, if, if he don't pay me some attention, then it might be a long time before somebody else pay me some attention. I had to get over that. You have to get over that. Because when you love yourself, you know that you are willing to wait for your man, not just any man, not a piece of a man. You want the whole kit and caboodle, as they used to say. Number three. I had to learn that my self-confidence and self-esteem was at an all-time low. I had to accept that it was at an all-time low because if I'm willing to allow just any man, anybody, any person to just come into my life and I'm like, <laughs> play with me, play with me, play with me. Uh, I was literally having a conversation with my girlfriend the other day and we were kind of making a joke about this particular thing and how because we wanted to be accepted and loved and and not just, again, not just romantic relationships, friendships as well. And it's like, I'm willing to give you all my toys. Here's all my toys so you can see how worthy I am. So you'll want to play with me. So you don't necessarily want to play with anybody else. You just want to, like, I'm worthy of your attention. I'm worthy for you to be my friend. I'm worthy for you to be my man. So we're, we're giving, just giving, just giving, just giving. And we're depleting ourselves. And whether we're giving them the opportunity to give back to us or not, it was not happening. And so we were feeling depleted. We were feeling completely depleted of feeling worthy of the, the man pouring into us and including, but not limited to some of those friendships. So you have to know that when your self-esteem or self-confidence is at an all-time low, that you have to start working on that so it can skyrocket because you have to know that you are worthy of more. You have to know that you are a deserving of more. And you have to know that nobody should be able to just come into your world and be able to do a thing, say a thing without your permission, cannot just treat you any kind of way. And guess what? We're teaching people how to treat us day in and day out, including but not limited to our spouse, our friendships, even our, our children, and of course, our coworkers and associates, everybody. Lesson number four that I learned was not knowing who I was, what I wanted, what I needed, had me attracting all types of men that I did not want, nor see a future with. But this is what happens when you don't love yourself. You attract all of these energies. Just anybody who can pretty much smell low self-esteem. They can pretty much sell a smell low confidence. They can pretty much smell the fact that they can take advantage of you and your vulnerability because you are wanting of something. In this case, love from a romantic partner. But even friendships, they will take advantage of you as well. We have to be careful, but this all goes to you not loving yourself. So when I didn't know who I was, when I didn't know what I wanted, when I didn't know what I needed, I was attracting all types of riffraff. And I did not see myself being in the future with any of these guys. But instead of me cutting the cord and allowing them to spread their wings sooner versus later, I dealt with the men that I attracted. Because I, again, my self-esteem was at an all-time low. And so I was just like, well, if I don't give him a chance, it might be a little while before I give somebody else a chance. After a while, I've come to understand that, that it is what it is, right? It is what it is. The time frame really shouldn't matter because there should have been work that I should have been doing on myself that I were, that I was not doing, which is why I kept attracting said energy over and over and over again. For years, I was in this merry-go-round and even in this rat race of attracting the same person over and over again because it's not just the time that's passing, it's what you do in the time that's passing. And for many of us, we need to start working on 
rebuilding and restoring the love for ourselves so we can attract different energy. But I was not doing that because I also didn't know. Get the tools, the tips, the strategies that you need so you can start implementing these things into your own life, into your own relationships. So you feel more confident, so you feel healthier, so you feel more beautiful, et cetera, right? By just understanding what's actually happening in your world. Number five, my insecurities were at an all time high, especially when I was triggered. Now, this is specifically to me being in relationship or in situationship with a guy. So because my insecurities was at an all time high, I noticed that I was acting differently because in my mind, I was trying to keep the guy, not realizing that what I was actually doing was repelling him because maybe I was acting too clingy, right? Maybe, um, you know, sex was mutual, right? He wanted it, I wanted it, right? But maybe I could have slowed down and not did that so quickly because in my mind, if I do this, if I impart this beautiful jewel to you, you're going to want to stay with me longer. And in fact, that's just not the case. So my insecurities were at an all time high. Maybe I was like, hey, how come I didn't hear from you? Like I've been texting you or like, you know, whatever the thing is, insecurities were showing up and they were showing out. And again, they were not attracting him to me. They were repelling him from me. And so I had to learn my stuff. I cannot put off on him. I cannot project my insecurities on him and make him believe or, or make me believe that what I'm doing or what I'm saying to him is correct. Yes, I could have asked questions, but differently, not um, blaming, not trying to accuse, because I know that my questions back in the day were not as straightforward as they are now, especially they had an accusatory tone to them back in the day where I'm able to really Get that together and control that today because who likes to feel accused? He doesn't. And guess what? Neither do I. Like, let's have an adult conversation about your feelings because your feelings are valid. That doesn't mean what you believe because we start making up stories when we don't have the conversation. Or if your spouse is ignoring what you're trying to ask, then we just make up all of these conversations. I mean, make up all of these stories in our head about what's actually happening. Some of it could be true. None of it could be true. Um, all of it could be true, right? So you'll never know that until you start to have that conversation so you can get a better understanding of what's actually happening. So that's what's happening. That will, That is what was happening to me back in the day. My insecurities was at an all time high and I was repelling the man when I thought I was keeping him close to the heart. The sixth lesson that I learned by not loving myself is that I did give away my body too quickly. Way too quickly. There was definitely some moments where I felt ashamed or guilty after the fact. It was like, but that didn't work. So if, if, if I'm giving away my body too quickly, but that's still not keeping them around, then what am I doing wrong other than give away my body? Like there is some other piece of the puzzle that I was missing in that moment and moments because it was not just a one man. I gave away my body too quickly too. It was a pattern, which is what made me start to realize, oh, wait a minute, hold up. You keep doing the same thing, but it ain't adding up. So you, me, Marshawn, you the only one that can change this, this, this scenario up. And that's what I did. I stopped giving away my body too quickly. I started really paying attention to who was in front of me. I started asking more in-depth questions to really get to know him. Because if you listen to my other, um, the lessons that I learned about giving away my body too quickly, I stopped trying to understand who was in front of me. The whole getting to know you phase that happens and should continue to happen throughout your relationship pretty much disappeared. And it was just every encounter after the first one was more about the sexual 
fulfilling than it was about the getting to know, than it was about where his mindset was and where our future was going, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was all about getting sexually involved in that moment. So I gave away my body too quickly, which was a lesson that I learned when I didn't love myself. Number seven. Number seven lesson that I learned is that I didn't reflect on the reasons why the relationship or even situationships kept felt kept kept failing before I started dating another man. And that's what I find even with a lot of my clients. We're not reflecting on our previous relationship and relationships to figure out what was going wrong, what you, in this case, me, what I was doing wrong in order to keep repelling this man. And so after I sat in silence, and reflected on what I was doing right, as well as what I was doing wrong. Now, the areas that I was doing wrong, I had to tighten up on those. Giving away my body too quickly, okay? I had to work on my self-esteem and confidence, okay? I had to figure out why I didn't love myself. So I had to ask myself the deeper questions to get down to the root causes as to why I was showing up the way that I was showing up, why I was acting the way that I was acting. And all of it came back to, I just wanted to be loved. I felt like I missed a part of that while growing up. And my parents can only do and gave me what they could give me, but I felt like I was missing something. So I was trying to get that missing piece from the men, even from friendships. Don't leave me. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm cool enough to be a part of your group, right? So I didn't reflect on the relationships and why they kept failing. So then that's why I started, that's why I not started, that's why I kept repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. I was on the hamster wheel of dating the same guy over and over again, not realizing why I was dating the same guy over and over again. Why do I keep attracting these men? this type of myth. Why? And that's what you have to do. Get it together so you can really figure out why you're doing this thing and why you keep attracting the same people over and over again. The eighth lesson that I learned by not loving myself was that I was giving away my power. I was giving it away to any friend and any man that was paying me some attention. Oh, you want me to do that? Okay, let's do that. Oh, you want to go here? Okay, let's do that. Oh, I, I should do whatever, right? I was never the person where you can get a whole lot of money from. That that was never my issue. But there were other things that, like my cross that I was bearing. There was other things that I was just like, like why, why do you keep doing that? Oh, why, why do you keep letting people do that to you? Why do you keep letting people say that? To, like, that, it's not funny. So you got to put these people in their place and let them know that that's not funny. Or you got to stop letting him do Whatever, whatever the thing was, right? And that's exactly what you have to do. You have to stop giving away your power and allowing people to treat you a, a way that doesn't make you feel good. And that's what I had to lean in on. I was like, no, oh, that, 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 something about that ain't right. Something about that don't make me feel good. And so I had to make sure that he knew and she knew. Yep, so now as an adult, you can't just do anything. You can't just say anything. You cannot just treat me any kind of way because I will call you on it. You got to get comfortable in setting your boundaries. Many people are not comfortable setting their boundaries, but you must. You must. Stop giving away your power. Got to take it back. Ninth lesson that I learned was that I was giving to the point that I felt depleted. And guess what? The taker is going to take. So the more you give, the more the taker is going to take. And the taker is not even going to feel bad about all of the taking that he or she is doing. Only thing they know is that their need is being met in that moment. So at some point, the light bulb has to go off at the top of your head and say, enough. Enough. You've taken enough. I've given enough. And guess what? The takers usually don't give. The takers take. The givers give. The givers usually feel depleted. The takers, unfortunately, just take, take, take. But guess what? They never feel satiated. They just take from you, 
They take from her. They take from him. They just take, take, take. That's their nature. Their nature is this to be a taker. So that's what they do. They take. We got to stop letting them take. You have to stop letting them take. I stop them from taking. The 10th and final lesson that I learned by not loving myself was that I was more comfortable around people than I was with myself. I didn't like being alone. I didn't like feeling lonely. And when I started to embrace my time alone so I can reflect, so I can just sit in silence, so I can hear my own voice instead of somebody else's voice, my critical inner voice, your critical inner voice is not your own, it's somebody else's. And at this point, because you've heard that thing so many times, you believe it's your own voice, it's really not. Maybe your thing is you heard how stupid you was, and so you believe it because you you said it so many times to yourself now that you believe with your own voice. That came from somebody else because none of us grow up believing that we're stupid unless we hear this over and over again, right? So I'm gonna tell you about my critical inner voice and we're gonna wrap this thing up. I wasn't comfortable being by myself because my critical inner voice was telling me, oh, you so black, you so ugly. Like any and all of the stuff that you hear about the darker skin, maybe you're a person that was saying it, was the things that my critical inner voice was saying. And I realized that that didn't come from me because I had never thought about my skin until somebody from outside of me pointed it out. That's what your critical inner voice does and is. Somebody pointed out your flaw, which they deemed was a flaw to them about you. And now you started taking it in as if it was your own flaw about yourself. So in my case, when I heard black and ugly and why you so, and why is your sibling so light and you so dark and was you burnt in the oven and all of that stuff, one day I was just like, that's stupid. Why am I taking that on? If I don't love myself, my, my first lesson, if I don't love myself in this chocolate skin that God wanted me to have, ain't nobody else gonna love me. Anybody else going to love you, sis? So you got to love you in order for other people to love you. You have to treat you with grace in order for others to treat you with grace. You have to treat yourself with respect in order for others to treat yourself with respect. You have to not allow people to walk over you, i.e. create those boundaries, in order for people to not cross the boundary. Everything that is happening to you it's for you to be able to get a handle on so you could show up in this life the way that you want to show up in this life. 